Hey guys, Chris Dale here with another video from overthewire.org. We are running through the web hacking series Natus and we're on level 20. Awesome. Now this web application says that we are logged in as a regular user, log in as an admin to retrieve credentials from Natus 21. Awesome. Okay, cool. So your name is, well, my name is Chris. And it seems like we're submitting to the web application, but nothing seemingly happens. Uh, let's take a look at the back end here, just quick. So we're posting name equals Chris, and then we can see that Chris is actually being put into the the input name here. The name is Chris, cool. So what about like attacks? So attacks like semicolon, not working, not working, excuse me. Quote, oh, the quote is actually filtered. What about signal quote? So that sticks. That's kind of interesting that 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 some characters stick and some characters don't. So when I have like vulnerabilities like these, I want to explore what are filtered and what are not. So with the quote, it just disappeared, but with the tick, it sticked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go with like say admin here, send this to the intruder, control I, and I'm gonna go through every possible value down here. Notice that we also have a session identifier here on this web page, and that's probably what causes this parameter here to be populated from each request to another. Mm, so I want to check to see if what characters are filtered and which are not. So I'm going to go through every possible character that I can input from 00, 0 to FF hexadecimal. I'm going to add a little URL encoding on this percentage, prefix it with a percentage, then I do a URL decode like this so let's see um second thoughts i want to do a graph extract i want to fetch everything which is in the contents here to start attack log in as regular user cool no seems to be no vulnerabilities whatsoever here everything is looking fine however this is of course just with a single byte input so what if I were to give it more inputs? So instead of doing payloads numbers here, what if I took say the fast DB and, and, and try to see how the application behaves when I give it all kinds of attack strings, like long strings, short strings, all kinds of different attacks. And I have made, so I downloaded the fast DB and I've configured it to like work for my type of style. So here I cross the scripting attacks, XPath for XML, XML injections, SQL injections, all kinds of different stuff. Uh, and I want to see how the application behaves when I give it all kinds of all sorts of attacks. Uh, so I have tuned FuzzDB to my likings. Uh, it's a beautiful little database you can find on GitHub containing all kinds of attacks. But I have uh, some some changes to it for me at least, right? So here I have a bunch of different attacks here. And I just want to see what happens to the application when I run it through this attack. You can see there's a bunch of attacks, 8,800. So I'm just going to see what happens here. Maybe some of these will give us some kind of, there we go, some kind of error message, some kind of potential vulnerability that we can that we can work on. I need to have something to work on. All of these logged in as regular users, unless there was like a timing attack or something, uh, I don't have much to go on here. But I did see that we have these notice undefined offsets. So offsets, uh, undefined offsets, so it's not an undefined var variable, it's an undefined offset. And offsets are normally in arrays or when accessing like, uh, like a, a list of something. So maybe we have some kind of vulnerability where we can put things into a list or a, an array of some kind. I'm gonna pause this attack here and we're gonna analyze. So actually, this is um, kind of sad because our attack actually we're doing URL decode on these attacks. So I'm gonna cancel this. I'm gonna remove this prefix and the URL decode. I'm gonna run it again. I'm just gonna pause it on some of the first vulnerabilities I can find here. I don't want to run through all 8,000 attacks here because I think we can work on some of these uh, that we found quite early. Yeah, they're all on the bottom here. So I'm gonna sort like this. And I'm gonna pause. All right, so given this string here, 
the application behaved with this undefined offset one, undefined offset one, your login is regular user. And then we have the input being echoed to us. So that's interesting. This one gives, so this is all kinds of different bytes, but this here, it looks like a format type of string attack, to be honest. This is a percent zero a, which is a new line or a character turn. Then we have a space, dir, c colon slash, and that's a huge output. And multiple different offsets here. Hmm. Multiple different off offsets. Here we have one offset being made. So it seems like percent zero a is the offending character, or maybe even better, percent zero b. What I'm gonna do, this is the shortest one, this is the easiest one for me to work on. So I'm gonna send this to the repeater. Same request, I just press control R. On the repeater, I click go, and I don't see any error, any error messages. You see, there's no undefined offsets. So <laughs> those type of vulnerabilities are so interesting because it seems like it's sporadic. Seems like something is only happening sometimes. Well, sometimes they don't happen. So for those type of vulnerabilities, it's normally something that has happened be before. So this percent B is probably triggering some kind of undefined offset here because of the request before, which is this. So let me send this request here. Look, look this is 169, this is 168. So I'm gonna send this one to the repeater. Control A, nothing happens, it's beautiful. And when I click again, it happens. We get undefined offsets. So undefined offsets, when given a percent zero A, let's reduce this, percent zero A, and nothing happened. You see that? I, I just removed, control Z doesn't work. I just removed percent zero A and the, the things before, uh, after percent zero A, and the, the problem seems to be gone. But when I have content behind it, and I do multiple requests, that's when I see this undefined offset. So no doubt about it, a line break here, let's double check, a line break, percent zero, that's not where I wanna be, percent zero A, so let's go to the ASCII table, percent zero A, a new line, a new line, when given a new line and following tests, and following text here, when given a new line and data, we get undefined offset one on line 62 in the source code. Hmm. So maybe we're putting things into an array based on line breaks. Can I give it another one here? What if I give it another one here? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this, look at this. For every percent zero A, I get another undefined offset. And I have to make it, uh, I have to make two requests because probably one is writing, another one is reading. So we're probably sticking something into a database or a file here. All right. So how do we fuss this then? Given test here. We get undefined offsets. So what if we put some like test equals test, for example, undefined offsets. Hmm. So this is hard. This is hard to fuss. We can start what I would normally want to do here. I would fuss inside of this variable. I would start to see if we can figure out a way to complete this request. So it doesn't break the application so that I can start to explore what causes it to break and what causes it not to break. However, with over the wire, one of the things I love is that many of the levels actually have the source code here. So we can take a look at the source code and try to figure out what's going on. I'm gonna bring the source code into VS Code here. And I'm gonna go shift, control shift P and change language mode into PHP. So we have syntax highlighting and we can analyze this from a more uh, white box perspective, which is beautiful. Sometimes black box can be really hard and time consuming. And you'll notice this when you work with pen testing. A lot of the times it's, it's the black box type of test. You have error messages, but no idea what's going on in, on, the, on the back end here. So here we have a debug function. If the array key debug exists in the get parameter, 
then we're going to debug error messages. All right, so we find these intent tests. The, how we find them is basically we take an application like this, and what we do for every pen test, this is a part of our minimum viable pen test methodology. We take requests like these and we send them through the intruder. You can also use uh, uh, you can also use um, tools like uh, guess get parameters here, from uh, which is a Burp suit extension by James Kettle. What we do is we add a question mark, so we are inside of get parameters, and we say variable equals variable, cluster bomb, and we say for the first variable we're going to go through form, say names. And then the second variable is going to be, say, form values, right? So the first variable here will go through every type of like access, success, admin, backdoor. And the second one is going to go through zero to two, admin, wizard, debug, on, off, and so on. And it's kind of useful to find. And, and the extension guess get parameters is much better at this. But I want to show you how you would do it manually without using an extension. So when given the debug parameter here, you can see that the results differ greatly. So this is what we do. We just sort by length and we see a discrepancy. Whenever the debug parameter is given, we see actually more contents being revealed from the application. So this would basically be us doing here, slash question mark debug. And we have more information, something regarding sessions here. All right, so back to the source code. Then we have the print credentials. You are an admin, so this is the success criteria. If the session variable is set and array key admin exists, so this is the first time we see admin, except we have it log in as admin, but that's kind of far-fetched. I would guess it to be like a username equals admin, something like that. And admin equals to one, so this would be hard to guess for us. Then we are the admin, okay. Then we have session open, close, reading the session making sure that the session conforms to a character set and we get the save path of the session and the session identifier cool and then we're reading from file name cool get contents of the file name and we reinitialize the session array for each request we make interesting and then we're going through every line sorry every new line Inside of the file name, we're gonna read this as a um, as a line. Yes, so this is where the vulnerability kind of resi resides. This is why we are seeing what we're seeing. A new line causes us to change the explode here, and the explode uh, function basically creates an array based on a delimiter. So we're exploding this string, and for every new line, we are populating a array, and we're looping through that array right now. And then we're even exploding each line based on a space, maximum number of two, I guess. And if as long as the, the key is not empty, then we're going to set the key in the session variable equals to the value. Cool. And then when we write to the session, I guess this is where the vulnerability is. So ignore this. File name, save, saving in yes, yes, yes. For each session as key to value, we're gonna append to the data. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're gonna create this data variable here with the key and a value, space delimited, and a new line. So we are actually injecting new lines inside of this data object here. And then we're gonna save it to a file. All right, cool. And this is just hijacking the session function. So this is a custom session handler. And if the array key name it exists in the request, so that's get and post, we're gonna set the name session to be equals name. All right. All right, so that looks to be it. So back to our application. So we could see that, let's close this down. We don't need a debug to be honest, I believe. When given a percent zero a, we're putting stuff into the session file, and it needs to be space delimited. So why don't we go back to intruder uh, repeater? And so our name can be whatever. So whatever here, and then we do new line. 
And I'm actually just gonna change session here, Chris test. We're gonna do a new line and we're gonna do admin and it was not equal, uh, it was space. Admin had to be equals to one up here. So we have to have a session. So the first time I create this, I will not have the session because the session does not exist. So it has to be created and written and then the admin has to be set and it has to be set to one. So this will not work and then it will work. And there we go. Your admin credentials for the next level are blah, 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 blah. Cool, cool, cool. Nice. So I guess that's how we do it. Uh, pretty, I would say pretty hard challenge to solve without, without having the source code. Any advice, any uh, tips you guys might have how to automate this into a minimum viable pen testing methodology? Like how would you find this in every pen test you encounter? That's what's interesting. Now keep in mind, we did have, we did have these error messages here, undefined offset one. And when you have this, it means that when you have some kind of error message, you have to understand, you have to go explore, you have to see what's going on. And if you're actually a pen tester, I would advise you to just work with your client. Ask them, can you give me the source code of this file? Seems to be a problem here. Seems to be something that you can work on, but from a black box, black box perspective, it's hard. From a white box or crystal box perspective, it's easier. And look, you're working on their money, so if they can give you access to, say, this source code file, you will have information on potentially an exploit condition someone smarter than us can exploit. So in this case, I would definitely reach out to the client and say, hey, we have potentially a problem here. Can you give me the log files? Can you give me source code? Send it via a secure mail, for example, and give us information. And that seems to be the challenge, guys. We have the next website, and that's for the next video. Guys, my name is Chris Dale. Check me out on Twitter, LinkedIn. If you hook me up on LinkedIn, by the way, let me know where you found me from so I know to accept you or not. And uh, yeah, put a comment in the comment section below and stay tuned for my next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.